Hello there, I'm Thundaga, and this is going to be a quick tutorial covering how to extract our Essentials game scripts for better script editing and GitHub collaboration. First, we'll talk about the pros and cons of script extraction and why you'd want to do this in the first place. Then we'll download the extract script plus a combined script from the Essentials GitHub project. Then we'll install Ruby, which will allow us to run that extract script. After that, we'll actually run the extract and then view all of our scripts in their new folder. Then we'll edit these scripts using our IDE of choice, such as Microsoft Visual Studio. We'll also cover how we can modify plugin scripts in this way. And lastly, we'll cover GitHub for collaborating with a team. I'll be uploading this project to GitHub so you can download it at the end. And before we get started, I want to stress that this is completely optional. If you're a beginner and you're unfamiliar with scripts, or you just straight up dislike scripting, feel free to skip this one. With all that said, let's get into it. So what are the pros and cons to extracting your scripts? One pro is that it makes all the scripts easier to comb through and edit. You can use an editor such as Visual Studio or any other IDE you're familiar with. Another pro is that when the scripts are extracted into their own individual files, it makes it easier for a group to collaborate. Person A can work on one script while person B is working on another script and they won't override each other's changes. Another big pro is that depending on your software, you could open the entire project and then edit the scripts as well as PBS files from the same place. For example, in Visual Studio, if I choose to open a local folder and then I make sure to go to my Pokemon folder and select it, I can then view everything from one place here. Along the right side of the screen is the Solution Explorer, and here we can open up script files from data, as well as PBS files, or even plugins. So for example, I could modify the abilities PBS, and then I could go into the plugins and take a look at following Pokemon configuration, and I can edit scripts or PBS here from the same place. We just need to be sure to save the changes we make and then compile those changes when we run the game. Also, don't even bother trying to open any of the audio or graphic files. Those just straight up don't work. This is for text files and scripts only. The main con of script extraction is that the script editor inside of RPG Maker will no longer work for us and will only have the main script inside. Since the scripts have been extracted, we now need to edit them through an external editor. This ends up not being too big of a deal though, as we get used to our new script editor. Plus, if we ever want to, there's always the option to combine them back and recompile them back into the one scripts.rx data file, which will then allow them to be edited in RPG Maker again. So if you think extracting your script sounds cool, let's move on. The first thing that we need to do is download and install a couple things. First, you'll need a program for editing the code. And in this tutorial, I'll be using Visual Studio. The community version is free and I like it, though if there's any other software you'd prefer to use, you can always choose to use that instead. A download link for Visual Studio and all the other resources that I mentioned will be in the video description. The next thing that we need to download are the Extract and Combine Ruby scripts from the Essentials GitHub by Maruno here. If we scroll down here, we can find scriptsextract.rb and scriptscombine.rb for the Ruby scripts. Let's start with Extract. If we click it, then in the top right corner here, we'll have the option to download the raw file. So let's download that. Then let's also go back and make sure that we grab Combine as well here and download that. Then we just need to take those two scripts and throw them into our game's root folder here. The next step is to install Ruby so we can actually run those scripts, and I would recommend using the Ruby installer for Windows. I grabbed the Ruby Dev Kit 3.4.5-1. That's the one that I'm using because that's the one that they recommend. When running the Ruby installer, you might get this Windows Protected Your PC message, but you can always just click More Info and then Run Anyway to install it. From here, you just need to click I accept the license, next, next, and then you just need to wait for it to do its thing. This is gonna take a little bit. Once that's done, then we can just hit finish, and then it'll pop up this command prompt window here. From here, we can just hit enter and let it do its thing. Then once that's done, we can hit enter again, and then Ruby should all be installed and ready to run. Now that we've got our script here and Ruby installed, we're basically ready to go. There's two things we need to cover first though. Number one, make sure you close your game down first. This won't work if RPG Maker is currently running. And number two, let's quickly look into our data folder and look at everything before it gets extracted. We can see here that there's all these RPG XP data assets, and if we scroll down, we can find the scripts RPG XP asset. Right now, every single script is living inside of this asset, and we can see that it's 1041 kilobytes. After we extract it though, we'll notice that this changes. So let's go back into our root folder here and then run the extract script. What you may need to do is right click and then do open with and make sure you select Ruby interpreter to open this. 
When we run it, we'll see a command prompt window briefly pop up because it's running the extract, and then we'll give it a little bit to do its magic. What we can do is refresh the window now, and then if we go into our data folder, we should see the scripts folder here. Everything has been extracted now. If we go inside and look at it, we can see that everything has been split up into folders and subfolders. There's also a bunch of Ruby scripts in here now, like settings now is a Ruby file. We can go in and look at like UI. All of these are now individual files. Then if we go back to the data folder here and we scroll down back to our scripts, we can see right here that it is now only one kilobyte in size. That's because there's not a lot going on inside of this now. All the scripts inside have been extracted out. At any time, if we choose to, we could always recombine the scripts back into the scripts RPG XP asset by running the scripts underscore combine. Now that our scripts have been fully extracted though, let's take a look at them inside of Visual Studio. We can select data, and then we can open the scripts folder, and then we can start modifying everything on an individual level. Like for example, we could go into battle and battle RB, and then scroll through here and look at everything and see that it's ex the exact same scripts as they were before, just now inside of individual files. And then what we can do is we can close this data folder, go down to PBS here, and then start modifying other PBS files as well, like Pokemon. If you ever find yourself opening the same file repeatedly, you can always choose to pin something. Along the tabs here in the top corner, we can click this pin button, and now the Pokemon.txt PBS file has been pinned. This is pretty convenient if there's a couple files that you basically always want to have open. And like we covered earlier, we can also go into all of our plugins this way. This is going to be very useful for future tutorials because I'm going to be covering plugins and then modifying some of them along the way or showing ways that they can be modified. And a lot of that modification comes from being familiar with using an external script editor, such as Visual Studio here, to comb through Ruby scripts. One thing that I also really like about Visual Studio is that if we do Control shift f to search through everything, it has expanded search functionality. Additionally, this way you could comb through all of the scripts and all of the PBS. For example, if we type in Giratina, we can search for everywhere where the word Giratina is used. We can see where it's set up in scripts, and we can see where it's set up in PBS. We can even see, scrolling down, where some of the plugins reference Giratina. This is really great and allows you to get a more holistic view of your entire project. And I said it before, but another reason that this is great is that it allows you to collaborate more effectively with a team through a GitHub project. Why don't we cover setting up this project on GitHub now? For this tutorial, we'll be using GitHub Desktop, so let's just go ahead and download and install that now. Once you have an account made and you're all set up with GitHub Desktop, the next step is to make a repository for your game project. I've already got one made here for Pokemon Avarice, as we can see in the top left corner, but I want to make a new one for our tutorial game project. To make a new repository, let's select File and then New Repository. Let's make the name of it something like Thundaga's Tutorial Project. And then for the description underneath, let's just say the project for Thundagas, that's me, essential, essentials, tutorials. The next is super important, and that's the local path here for our project folder. Right now it's trying to create it in my Pokemon Avarice folder, so we need to change that. Let's hit choose here. I already have a folder for my V21 tutorials, so let's just select this folder. Now what this will do is it'll create a repository in my Pokemon stuff folder in the V21 tutorials folder, and then it'll be Thundaga's tutorial project. Let's go ahead and create this repository now. With our repository made, we can then go and publish it to GitHub. Everything in here looks good, and I want to keep this code private for now. Let's go ahead and publish it. We still haven't added any files to our repository though, so let's go ahead and do that. Before we take our entire game and drag it into this repository folder, what we should first do is close RPG Maker. Now what we can do is we can take our entire game folder and drag and drop it into our repository folder. Now if we look inside of our GitHub desktop, we can see a bunch of files are being added to our project. Looks like about 18,613 files, so that's a lot. What we need to do now is push these changes to the repository. In order for us to do this, we need to give the change that we're pushing a summary, so let's describe it down here in the bottom. We'll call it adding project to GitHub, and now we can commit it. Since we're adding so many files here, this is gonna take a long time. If you only have one or two small changes, this is pretty fast. But since we're uploading our entire game folder, this is gonna take a little bit of time. Now that our change has been committed, the next thing we need to do is actually push it. 
We can push the change by either clicking on this button here along the top of the toolbar or by clicking on this blue button here. Either way, we'll be pushing our change to the GitHub repository. Let's click push and now it'll be pushing all of those. And this is gonna take a little bit of time as well because once again, there's a lot of files. And just like that, our project has now been fully uploaded to GitHub. Now, anytime we make a change, they will show up here on this left list for the changed files. For example, if I update the Pokemon Forms TXT for the PBS file and then go back in, we can see that this is the one file that was changed. Just for this example, I updated the base experience a little bit for Mega Charizard. If we go and we make a change to a map and then we save that, like for example, if I take this event and move them over here and save that, now if we go back to GitHub Desktop, we can see that a bunch of RPG Maker files have all been updated. But we can also see that map78.rx data was updated. Once again, most of this is stuff we don't even use, like for example the armors.rx data is something that we never touch in Pokemon fan games, but just something to be aware of when you're using GitHub here. And then at any time, we can then go and upload this change again. So we could call this updating Charizard base XP and moving event guy. And then we could commit that to main as well. And then once it's been committed, we can then push it. Once it's done pushing, we'll see that and there we go. One thing to keep in mind that can be a little bit annoying is that if you're using Visual Studio, you may need to close it down before you can commit your changes. So for example, in our settings script, if we go here and just set our mechanics generation to seven and save that, then if we look at it in GitHub, we can see some other files here. We can see our settings.rb change, but then we can see a couple other files here for the Visual Studio stuff. If we go in and just call this change and then try to commit it, we'll get this little error here because Visual Studio is still open. So if we close this and then close Visual Studio, then we can commit it. When you're collaborating with others, you'll also want to make sure that you're fetching origin to pull the latest changes and then pulling them if other changes have been made. Using GitHub with a team is all about pushing and pulling. You'll want to take your changes and push them into the repository. And then when somebody else makes changes, you'll want to pull them so you download those. If you ever want to add somebody as a collaborator, what you can do is go to repository and then do view on GitHub. What this will do is it will show you your whole repository online, similar to when we looked at the Pokemon Essentials repository by Maruno earlier in this video. If we go in and click on the folder, we can see all of the files here. If you ever wish to add a collaborator though, you can do that through settings, collaborators, and then add people. This way you can share access to this folder with people who you want on your team, and you can all push and pull changes to this folder collaboratively. If you have a team of four people, you could totally have one person uploading their art into the graphics folder, while another person works on a map, and then two other people are working on scripts or balancing PBS files. You should just always be sure that if two people are working on the same file, that you communicate and pull the latest changes before submitting, just to make sure that nobody's work ever gets overridden. When pulling, any local changes you have will merge with the pulled changes, and you have the choice of what to keep should anything conflict. Since this is a source control platform, you can always check the history and review all the changes that have been made, and if you want, you can revert back to a previous change if you ever end up breaking things. There are many other methods of source control out there, but for Pokemon Essentials projects, I like using GitHub Desktop since it's pretty beginner friendly. And that does it for this tutorial on script extraction and GitHub. I hope you feel more comfortable extracting the scripts and working on things with an external code editor. And I also hope you feel more comfortable setting up a GitHub project. I'll put the link to this project in the video description so you can download my project here. Thank you so much again for watching. If you learned something, please remember to like and subscribe. As a reminder, this tutorial was for Pokemon Essentials version 21.1, so in the future it's possible that the layout of some things could be changed. In general though, this series should get you where you need to go when it comes to making your own Pokemon fan game. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something, and I hope you have a good one. Best of luck to you and your Pokemon fan game endeavors. Bye now!